Good morning. Good morning. Today I'd like to share with you the first in a new planned series of Temple Talks that will be focused on financial matters here at Prince of Peace. These talks will be provided periodically throughout the year to keep our members informed on the current financial condition of the congregation, to help educate our members about the financial structures we have in place, and to answer questions that you may have. So welcome to Prince of Peace Finance 101. With our annual congregational meeting only weeks away in November, I thought it might be helpful if today's presentation featured a brief overview of the various primary operating funds we use to manage monies here at Prince of Peace. This should help give everyone a preliminary warm-up for the November meeting and also provide you with a basic working knowledge of our finances. We have four primary pools of money that I would like to discuss with you today. They are the general fund, the memorial fund, discretionary use investments, and the endowment fund. Let's quickly detail the purpose of each fund, how each fund operates, and what type of financial instrument is used to hold money for each fund. The general fund. I'm sure that many of you have a household checking account and use that as a primary tool for the payment of bills and a place where you deposit paychecks, social security checks, or other income. Your checking account is likely the primary account for most financial activity in your household. The general fund serves the same purpose for our church. It is a checking account where offering and all inbound operating income is deposited. We pay our bills from it via checks or electronic withdrawals. Nothing fancy, but the vast majority of all financial transactions handled by the church run through this account. I'm confident that this is very similar to personal accounts most of you use, so this will be familiar to almost all of you. The Memorial Fund. The Memorial Fund is made up of donations that have been received in memory of deceased members of our church. Friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, or others provide a gift, and the money is deposited into this fund. A policy is in place governing the use of monies in this fund, limiting the use of these funds to projects enhancing our sanctuary or our worship experience. A recent example of such a project was the installation of new video projectors and the sound system, both of which were paid for from the Memorial Fund. The largest portion of the fund is invested in thriving mutual funds, and a smaller portion is held in a bank account, which allows fast and easy access for any small purchases that might be applicable to this fund. These first two funds are pretty straightforward, and it's likely that you may already have a good idea that they exist and how they work. But the next two may not be as familiar and are important for us to detail, especially as we approach the November annual meeting. Discretionary use investments. This is not really a fund per se, but has historically been a collection of monies held in thriving investments that originated from fun and fellowship activities years ago or earlier building fund campaigns where receipts exceeded our mortgage obligation. Over the past 15 to 20 years, these discretionary monies have been a key source of funding for a variety of unbudgeted property maintenance projects related to the church building, the surrounding property, and the parsonage. A few of the most recent uses of these monies included the replacement of the parsonage septic system, a portion of the emergency electrical service repairs from several winters ago, and the subdivision of the Sunday school rooms at the far end of the fellowship hall. These discretionary use monies have made a lot of five to $20,000 projects possible without borrowing money over the years. The money has been readily available in our investment portfolio when needed but we are now faced with the reality that these funds have dwindled to less than $8,000. This represents a key challenge as we go forward in terms of how to best address unbudgeted larger projects and where to best source money quickly when needed. 
the endowment fund. You may be aware that for the past 25 or so years, we have had an endowment fund. It was begun in the 1990s as the result of a single sizable bequest. Since its inception, there has been very little activity either into or out of this fund, as the council approved policy governing access severely limited usage. The monies are currently invested in Thrivent mutual funds, and the only significant movement in the fund since its creation has been the long-term growth of the fund, resulting from the reinvestment of market gains across time. The withdrawal of approximately $45,000 several years ago to pay for roof replacement on this building, and a recent additional bequest from a former pastor of our church in East Bangor who served during the 1950s. The fund has historically been treated essentially as a rainy day fund, allowed to grow across time, strictly limited in access and use, with no specific planned usage. In July of this year, we dramatically overhauled that strategy, the governing policy and planned usage of this fund. The new policy governing this fund is very detailed, but here are a few highlights. A vital new aspect to the endowment fund will be that the church will actively seek new donations to this fund, focusing specifically on milestone events like birthdays, anniversaries, and other key lifetime occasions for periodic donations, as well as estate planning bequests as potential larger one-time gifts. This will provide the opportunity to grow the fund over time. An annual disbursement of 5% of the year-end value of the endowment fund will now be made. In addition, 20% of any new money donated to the fund each year will be added to that 5% disbursement in order to accelerate the rate of disbursement while still allowing for the growth of the fund balance across time. This disbursement will be directed to one or more sub-funds that will act as holding places for money until it is needed to fund approved expenses. A permanent sub-fund for unbudgeted property-related expenses has been created to help offset the risk of the limited remaining monies in the discretionary use investments I previously discussed above. Voting members of this congregation will play a key role, being asked to approve or decline the sub-funds that Council presents at the November annual meeting. A new group of individuals called trustees has been created. They will manage the necessary responsibilities of operating the endowment fund throughout the year. We believe that the new actively managed endowment fund will be, sent, uh, be a central part of financing a variety of projects and ministry programs as we go forward. Please see me after church if you have any questions or see available information on the, on the counter in the narthex. I hope this Temple Talk helped to provide you with a better understanding of our financial structure and gave you information that will be helpful at the November meeting. Thank you. Th thank you, Jim. We really appreciate that.